Chi guit, agus kid mi le fall chi gop bol yak lia, agus tu bil kan mi le shedig, kan mi le shedig. Hello, welcome to Drupalcon 1016, and then I correct myself as a 2016, <laughs> or else we had a thousand years in the past. Um, okay, we're, we're going to look today at getting started with Ionic Framework uh, and Drupal for creating hybrid web apps. Um, and it is a getting started, this isn't an advanced tutorial, it's hardly even an intermediate tutorial, it's, it's, it's the basic idea of how you create APIs with, with Drupal and then how you expose that uh, information to an external service and how you use an external service to render uh, this data and then how you package that up as an iOS app and or a, an Android app. Now my name is Mark Conroy, I'm a lead front-end developer with Anertech, we're Ireland's leading Drupal agency. Basically if something happens in Ireland that's got to do with Drupal you can be pretty sure that Anertech have been involved if not been taking the lead on it. Um, we're going to talk today about some background about myself, let's say, and the reason I decided I needed an app, uh, what makes me a megalomaniac. If you don't speak English as a first language, that's Donald Trump, basically. Uh, we're going to look at Drupal as a RESTful API service and what you might do with that. We'll have a brief uh, look at what is Ionic Framework. My wife corrected me for not having a question mark at the end of that, and I got to stop bike shedding and we'll just get on with the information. So I didn't put in a question mark. Then we look at connecting the dots. That means looking at how we connect Drupal to Ionic Framework and use that then to, uh, to, to create our apps or to create web apps or to create some sort of a decoupled um, uh, website based on Drupal as a data store. And then we'll have questions and answers. Uh, uh, said go easy on me. That was for the first time I gave this presentation. So you can go a little bit harder now, but still go easy on me. It's a getting started presentation. So some background, I decided to run as a candidate in the elections in Ireland uh, about six, maybe eight months ago, we had elections, uh, the national elections, and I said I was going to be a candidate and I was going to uh, get elected, and uh, I'm still working as a web developer. <laughs> so I, I thought I had everything in place. You know, I, I had, a, had a poster campaign, I'm going to sort shit out. You know, who, who doesn't want to work with someone who's going to sort shit out? Uh, it wasn't about making Ireland great again, it was just about sorting stuff out. Uh, that might get us started. Um, had a Facebook page. My wife tried to stop me, so I ran over her in a tank. Uh, you know, she is actually, as it happens. <laughs> we sleep in separate rooms now. Uh, it's cheaper than buying two houses. So we, 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 we had some hashtags, Mark for King, Galway Beast. My constituency was Galway East. So I said, we're going to be the Galway Beast. Um, and I put a hashtag to Galway Beast as well. One person retweeted one tweet once. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the campaign wasn't going great. <laughs> I was glad I had a job to fall back on. Um, I got an endorsement from a fellow megalomaniac. <laughs> Donald Trump said there's only one credible candidate in Galway East for general election 16 and that's Mark Conroy and that got lots of retweets and favourites so he's good for something you know he's good for someone else's branding or marketing and I got an endorsement from somebody that I never heard of before uh, Hillary Clinton said that if Donald Trump is voting for Mark Conroy then she's voting for Mark Conroy uh, they don't seem to have very many differing ideas um, so that sounded fairly okay I had this idea then that what I'd need is an app. I want to make sure that if somebody is involved in the Mark Conroy campaign, that uh, I can spam them. You know, that if, if, if they got a phone in their pocket, I want to send them my newsletters. I want to send them text messages. I want to send them push notifications. I want to make sure that every single time they pull out their phone, they see me, and that's going to get me elected. If I don't have this kind of spamming infrastructure, I'm not going to get elected. So I said, I'd build an app. So that's basic background of why I was, or what I was hoping to uh, win, I suppose, win, win an election. And I thought, okay, Drupal is a perfect framework for me to build a content management system for this. Um, not least because it's the only content management system that I understand how to use. Um, so I was kind of stuck. So we, we look at Drupal, we say it's a content management framework, and we say we use this to create uh, 
lots of things. One thing we use it mostly for is to create content management systems. Uh, it can be used to, and I've put in a few blah, blah, blahs. I've got, got a feeling if you got as far as Drupal can, you've got a fair idea of what Drupal is, or at least know it, 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 the kind of things it does. So we'll skip these boring parts. Let's look at creating a RESTful API using Drupal. There was another slide in this from when I gave this presentation uh, a few months ago, and, and it was how to do this with Drupal 7 as well. Uh, Drupal 7 was quite complex. You need maybe six or seven different modules and you kind of patch web services together and RESTful API together and different things. And it, 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 it wasn't difficult, but it was more involved, let's say. In Drupal 8, this is simple. This is, this, this, I, I couldn't believe how simple this was when I, when I tried to do this. You enable the serialization module, you enable the RESTful web services module, and you probably should have some authentication. Now, to create a prototype app or a very simple app for yourself just to see how things work, you, you, you don't need to authenticate it really, but you should have some authentication and the HTTP basic authentication module comes in core. After that then, you're gonna to need to create some uh, views to list the data that you want to consume in your app. Um, my suggestion would be that you create a view to list all the listing pages you'll need. So in my case, I'd need one for my press releases, one for my news, one for my uh, campaigns I was involved in and things like that. I should probably mention here, I didn't actually run the election. That was, that was just a backstory. Um, and then I would say you should also maybe create one view that lists every node on your website with a path of example.com slash node slash node ID slash JSON or slash uh, feed or something, whatever you want, you want to call it. So then you'll have all your lists and all of your uh, nodes individualized as as JSON entities. Now to do this, you, you get these three modules, HTTP basic authentication, RESTful web services, and serialization, and you click install. It, it is as simple as that uh, to get the, the infrastructure that you're going to need to create a RESTful API with Drupal 8. Then you create a view. So normally when we create views, we've got two options. Do you want to create a page, or do you want to create a block? Uh, in this instance, when, when you enable these modules, you get a third option, and that is to create a REST export um, view. So you tick your little box to say yes, provide a REST export, and then you enter a path for this. So if you have example.com slash articles as your, um, your, your listing page for your articles, then you can have example.com slash articles slash JSON or, or XML or whatever path you want, and that will give you the exact same list except with a, in a JSON output. Uh, click Save and Edit, and you get to your view page, and then you can choose here, um, the format will be serializer and the settings, you can leave this as default. If you leave it as default, it will automatically create a JSON feed and an XML feed. If you don't leave it as default, you choose which you want, JSON or XML. Uh, I'm not sure about, about other formats. Um, so if you leave that blank and touch, just don't touch it, um, you can click save and you, you'll start getting data. Actually, you, you will need one thing, you need to add the fields that you need. So you're, you're going to need to add your title field, your body field, your image field. You might add the image field three or four different times because you might want it with different, um, different image settings. So you might have a square image and a long image and a short image and teaser image and things like that. Um, and then whatever filter criteria you need. And then you get some uglified JSON. Now, depending on your, your PHP setup and your Apache setups and things like that, you can have that printing uh, a bit better. So that is their, um, that's listing all articles inside a JSON array with each article being an object. <clears throat> so with that, we've got RESTful data. That's, that's it, that's a, that's, a, that's a RESTful API in, in Drupal 8, it's, it's that easy. So you, you enable modules, it takes 15, 20 seconds, you create a view, it takes maybe one minute, and you're ready to at least get started or start prototyping. So we can consume this data then any way we want. We can create a, say, a headless Drupal website, so you, you, you have your information in one place and you've got your, your presentation in, an, in another place. Um, we can create it as a canonical source of information, so you might have uh, a large website that has all of your news, but you might have some subsites, and these subsites just promote the news that's related to DrupalCon, so you might have a DrupalCon subsite for yourselves, and this you can filter that out, and not have to install the whole of Drupal, and not have to have the whole database and, and, and stuff that goes with that, just have a, a front end that, that uses the Drupal data and is pulled in via React or Angular or Ember. Um, I think Ember is probably what we should be looking towards. I've got a feeling that's that's going to be flavor of the month uh, when Dries makes his decision. Um, you can use it to differentiate a great editor experience from a great front end experience. So you can you can let your back enders and maybe front enders focus on here is a beautiful 
editing experience for your website, that, that we don't have the big, long, boring forms that we have presently from the Seven uh, team. We can have a really nice back-end team, and then you can have a really nice front-end team, or else a really nice front-end that's, that's independent of Drupal because it's, it's, it's a headless site, basically. Or you can pull the information uh, into your app and consume it that way, and that's, that's the goal today. So there's, there's lots of different things you can do once you have your data uh, in, this, in this manner. So let's have a quick look at what is Ionic Framework. Ionic Framework, uh, the first thing to mention, I suppose, that it doesn't say it here, is that it's free and open source. So I think it's very good to have that uh, if you're using you know, free open source software like Drupal. Um, it's good to try to work with, with other free and open source um, products. Uh, it's a hybrid web app development kit. That means it makes more than just the app that, that you might be developing first. So you might be developing an iOS app. Well, it's hybrid. It'll make iOS and Android. Uh, Ionic 1 does not make uh, Windows apps, but Ionic 2 does, and the beta version of it presently does, and it's, I'd say, in the next week or two going to be released uh, as a full stable Ionic 2. That will make, uh, or will build Windows apps for you. Uh, what you do really is you, you use the open web standards and uh, technologies that we all know and love, and that is basically HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And you don't need to worry about lots of really fancy stuff and you don't need to worry about the wall gardens of using Swift or using Objective-C or using Java and runtimes for Android and runtimes for, for uh, uh, iOS. You're, you're basically building a little website that uses HTML, CSS and JavaScript that we can all know and love and uh, this will let us then create web apps basically and the web app then gets packaged up into a web view and that web view is what's used then inside the, inside the uh, Android, or Ion, uh, Android or iOS device. Uh, if you want to create Mac apps, so if you want to create an iOS you, app, you do need to have a Mac computer. The reason being that when you when you package your app, it, it packages an, uh, what's the format for Xcode? Is it .xcode or whatever it is? It packages that, and then you need Xcode, which is only available on Mac computers. You need Xcode to actually package that into the iOS app for you. Um, so if you're on a Linux machine, you will only be able to, uh, you can develop the hybrid app but you need to get a friend that has a Mac computer to package the, the um, iOS part of it for you. You can only do the Android part. Um, and it, yeah, that's that page, I suppose. Uh, it comes with lots of built-in features. So if you're used to a framework like, say, Twitter Bootstrap or a Foundation, you, you know how to create menus and give them menu classes. And by just adding all the different classes you want into your HTML, you get, you get your Jumbotron, you get your slider, you get your drop-down menus and things like that. It comes with all those kinds of uh, things built into it that you might need for creating apps such as you know, a class called card and a class called list and, and these kinds of things. And these automatically build in the front end that looks like a material design type front end. Um, it comes with supports for SAS, so you, you, you can very easily uh, not write CSS, you can write SAS and you can recompile it and it has live reload and things like that. Once, once you type ionic serve into your terminal, it, 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 every page, every JavaScript file that gets changed, every HTML file that gets changed, every CSS file, every SAS file that gets changed, automatically live reloads it for you and you can, you can watch it in your browser. Um, so that's an overview of the, of the built-in features page from ionicframework.com. Uh, There's a couple of websites you could look at. Ionicframework.com is, uh, is, we'll say, drupal.org. Ionic.io is drupal.com in terms of it's the, the marketing site of it. And then there's one called creator.ionic.io, which allows you to have a, a drag and drop interface to prototype what the app might be like. And you can package it up and then download that and use that as your, as your starting, starting uh, place. So if, for an example, you're going to create a list, so, uh, it's as simple here as you can see, you, you can find the CSS class components on the Ionic Framework website, and you need two classes for a list. One is list, and that automatically says that it is a list, and it gives it whatever margins and paddings and, uh, you, you, you would expect on, on a list item. And then the class card, and card automatically then puts it in little divs with border shadows and things like that. Uh, the same then you can see later on, you've got uh, href, and the class is item, item, icon left. If you say item icon left, automatically the icon that's there comes in on the left. And in the i then, that's um, uh, an icon um, element, the same as if you use Font Awesome or something, but it has what's called ionicons. So these are icons built by the ionic guys. Uh, so here we've got an icon, and it's ion home, so it's the home icon. And the same then you can see on the next one is telephone, the next one is Wi Fi, and the next one is uh, card for credit card. So you know, w without knowing how to create all these apps and without knowing even much HTML and things like that, you can just use these cards, use these, sorry, these classes 
to get a look and feel of a, of a native app, and then you can change just your colors yourself to make it look and feel like your your, your branding colors, or you can go for you know the the, the full on experience of you know skinning the whole thing from start to finish. Um, the same thing with JavaScript. If you go to the JavaScript section of of, of IonicFramework.com, you can see all the different um, interaction features that will be available to you. So if, if if you want a feature such as a modal, so you want you know you click on a, a login button and you want it to pop up in a form, not not to go to a new page. Um, well, that's very uh, very simple to do. So you you, you find the cl the service that would be needed, and in this case here it's called Ionic Modal, and you can see here then that we've got an Angular module called Test App. Uh, it's got a controller called My Controller, so the controller is going to going to going to determine what functionality is available when this controller is called on on a page. And in this case, we've injected scope and injected Ionic Modal uh, into the into the parameters of the of My Controller. So that's just the, the basic dependency injection thing that every time this gets loaded, this gets this gets used. And that's how easy it is to add new features. So if you want to add in geolocation, you want to add in push notifications, or you want to add in um, um, something else, <laughs> uh, that's that's kind of as, as easy as, as it is. So if we're going to create a basic app, so the, the very first app we're going to create, you, uh, you've you installed Node, and you've installed Gulp, and whatever you need that goes, goes along, along with it. I won't talk about those. But in your terminal, then you run this command, ionic start, and then you give the app a name, and then you say the style of the app you want. So you could say Ionic Star Drupalcon uh, blank, or Ionic Star Drupalcon tabs, or Ionic Star Drupalcon side menu. And depending on which style you want, you get a different set of files to, to show you, or to, to pre-build what the shell of the website, or what the shell of the app is going to be like. So if you choose blank, you get a blank slate, you start, start from scratch. If you choose tabs, you get what you see here on the left. And if you choose side menu, you get what you see on the on the right. So if you look at on the left at the bottom of the screen, you can see there's a status uh, button, and there's a chat uh, tab, and there's an account tab for settings. So that's where the tabs go, and then you can change them if you want. For iOS, you might say you want the tabs on the bottom, and for Android, you might say you want the tabs on the top. Um, if you choose side menu, you can see the stuff where it says reggae, chill, dubstep, indie, rap, and cowbell. Uh, that's a default playlist list that comes with, with Ionic if you choose side menu. And then if you click the hamburger, the left slides across, and you can see there that you get a login, search, browse, and playlists um, menu items. So if we were to um, look then at the directory and file structure of Ionic, on the left-hand side, um, it's a side menu app that we're creating here for the Getting Started tutorial. You've got a few directories, hooks, platforms, plugins, SESS, www, and some files. You can ignore everything in there. That's all Ionic stuff, and you are not interested in it, except you might want to look to see how it actually works, let's say, but you don't need to interfere with those. The only uh, directory we're interested in is the www one, so that's our, our actual web app. So if we look inside the web app, then it's, it's fairly easy to understand the structure. There's a CSS uh, directory, an images directory, a JavaScript directory, a library of um, helper functions and things that come with Ionic, and then a templates directory. Um, I, I would change this structure around if, if I were you, and I'd go for the more component-based approach. And if you got a, a, a home page, let's say, I would create a home directory, and inside I'd have a JS directory, so I'd have my home.js, and I'd have my home.scss for my SAS, and I'd have my home.html for my homepage um, uh, HTML, so that, that you, you keep each component in its own kind of modular modular place, rather than all the JavaScripts in one file, and all the CSS in one file, and all the templates in one file, because it could get a bit, um, a, a bit messy, or a bit kind of hard to remember what goes where. Um, OK, so we're to add a new page to our app. So what we have back there was that's what you get default with the home page. To add a new page then, you go to your www folder, you go to your JS folder, and then you go to the app.js um, file. Now, like I said a moment ago, I would have a home.js here, and I'd have a news.js, and a news item.js, and things like that. But what comes is just an app.js, and all the app stuff gets lumped in there together, um, kind of like a WordPress team. Uh, so you, you go to that, you, you edit the states. The, the, the states that you find are the default behavior, the default state that each item is, is in when you load the app. Um, and then you edit a menu entry. So you add a menu, menu entry. So you, you find a HTML file called menu.html. It'll have five items in it. You add one more item to it. Then if you want a template for this, so you can share templates, you can say that, 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 that the, the state for this is that it's a news item, but a news item is the exact same as a blog item, so they can both share the same template, and we call that article or something like that. Or you might need a new template because you might be creating a home page, and you might say, okay, for the home page, we're going to create a new template. 
And then you create a controller if you need one. So if there's interactivity on this page of the website that you want, when you click on it, it pops up in a modal, or when you click on it, it allows your camera to open up so you can take a picture and things like that. If you need a controller, you, you, you create one. So the states uh, we, we, we get here um, on first looking at Ionic, there's the playlist states. That's, that's the home page that you saw a moment ago that had reggae and dubstep and whatever else was, was on it. So you can copy and paste that and start again. Then. So we're going to call app.about. We're going to say that the URL for this is slash about. So the URL for the first one, uh, there is none because there's a default state, and the default state will be slash playlist, playlists. So the home will always go, go back to that page. So we'll say the URL for this is going to be slash about. Uh, it's going to use um, the template called about.html, and it's going to use a controller called about controller. And we probably actually don't need that here because we're just going to create static content. But if we were going to create something that was dynamic or something that needed interactivity, that's, that's the controller that would start uh, kicking in. So to add a menu item, then you can see you got ion item, open ion item close, and then there's a close near the bottom called ion list. In Ionic, we don't use uh, the elements that we have normally in HTML, such as UL and LI to, to, for an unordered list and a, and a list item. Uh, Ionic has its own directives that, that do its own special thing and present it this way. So an ion list is a, a list, as in UL. An ion item is a list item, as in LI. Um, but besides that, it's basic HTML that you're, you're writing there then. So you give it a, a class called menu close, which means it's presently closed. And if it's clicked on, it'll get a class of menu open. Uh, you give it a href to say it goes to slash app slash about, so it'll bring us to our about page. And then you put in a title, and we call it about me, 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 because I'm a megalomaniac, apparently. Um, so this is a template then for the, this one here was the menu.html template, and this is the uh, template we created called about.html. And it's very simple. We've got an eye on view title says about me, me, me. So that's the very top of the page. It, that's the title you get there. And then we've got a H1 that says this is the about page. And then we've got a paragraph that says this content is so static. Why can't I be dynamic? So what this is going to create then is on the left hand side, you can see there's a new menu item. And on, on the bottom, you can see that this is the page that if you had clicked on about me, 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 you'd see that where it says this content is so static. Why can't I be dynamic? And that's it really. That's That's how you create pages for your for your apps that's that's fairly simple it's fairly basic html and you know, even someone like me could get the grips with it so you want to create more pages well again you're just going to repeat what you've seen above you, you're going to create a new state for the for the new page you're going to add another state, or you're going to reuse an existing template you're going to add a menu item to it and then you can eat some cake um, it's 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 not difficult um, but it does only create static content and we we want more than static content because if we've only got static content and you want to change something, for example, you might have the word form, F-O-R-M, but you might have spelled it F-R-O-M from by accident. Well, you've got to submit your app to the App Store again because now you made a change to your app. And Apple's going to take maybe three weeks uh, to accept your app or to refuse your app. And you've you got to go through, through that, that system again. So if we got dynamic content, then that's, that's, that's the great thing about using something like this and using something like Drupal. Every time you add a news page to your website every time you add a blog post you don't have to resubmit your app to the app store again i mean if that was the new york times or maybe 500 articles a day they can't submit 500 submissions of their app a day and wait for three weeks for each submission to to, to come through so so we need a dynamic we, we need to get these listing views and we need uh, we, we need to pull these into our app um so we can connect the dots we can take ionic framework which can do the appy stuff we can take drupal which can do the content management -y stuff and uh We'll connect the two of them together to make a new service for ourselves. So any content that's updated on the website then automatically gets updated on the app. So if you change the spelling, it's updated. If you add a new uh, blog post, it's updated. Um, you, you can go as far as adding new features to your website, to your, to your app, sorry, uh, and they would be automatically available uh, on, on the app for, for users as long as they're not adding new JavaScript functionality. So for example, if you don't have any modal pop-ups, but now a new version of your app wants modal pop-ups, then you've got to resubmit that one again. But if it's able to use the JavaScript that's already there, uh, it's it's free game to start improvising and doing doing what what you're doing. Um, okay, so we're going to create something like this. So this is this is the Mark Conroy app. At the top it says Mark Conroy TD. TD stands for Chock the Dollar, which is Irish for uh, the Houses of Parliament. So every every elected member of our Parliament is whatever their name is TD. The same as you'd have MP in uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, and then it will there's an image there, and that will come from a website. So the and then it says, hi, my name is Mark Conroy. And the uh, Mark Conroy section of my name is 
comes from the data in Drupal, the hi, my name is, doesn't. So this could be very generic that any politician could purchase this app for me and they've just got to fill out a form on their Drupal website and we'll suck in the data and have the nice friendly uh, hello, my name is items around it. Um, the content underneath that then, I was elected to the Dole in 2016, etc. that comes from Drupal and the, my constituency's office is hard coded into the app, but the address, I won't tell you, it's actually my home address. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it probably shouldn't be there. The address, um, uh, that comes then again from filling out a form on, on the Drupal website. So we, we create something that's a fairly si simple app, that's just a simple home page for it. It's just to add some tension, you know, create excitement. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, so we're going to use data like this. This is just a JSON object. The data comes out uh, as nodes, and we got the first dot node. Then uh, has a title, has an image. The source of the image then comes from sample content slash images slash news slash Mark Conway web dot jpeg. So what I've actually done here is taken the, the JSON from my website, so I'd be able to preview it live and show what's happening, um, and just put it into a JSON file. I'm not going to show it live because when I tried to give this presentation in Ghent for front end United, it just kept my computer kept crashing. So I've just taken screenshots instead, but that's just sample content coming from coming from a directory inside inside Ionic. Um, then we got a field for phone number, email, constituency office, uh, short bio about me, and then some social media links. So using data like this, we uh, oh, did I do something wrong there? Yeah, using data like this, we're going to create a sing single page. So we're going to have a template that we'll see in a minute, and this template will say ng controller. So the controller that we're using via Angular, ng controller equals. Uh, personal control. So it's going to use a controller called personal controller to be able to get this data and pull it into uh, Angular uh, uh, expressions. We're going to use the HTTP service from that, so we're going to use dependency injection to say that there's a dependency on this uh, service, HTTP. Every time this, uh, this, this page is called, inject this service as a dependency into the, into the app. Um, and we're going to use this to get the JSON data, and then we're going to use an expression. An expression in Angular is the same as an expression in Twig. It's just two curly braces, and we pop whatever we want inside there. So here's the personal controller. We've already created uh, app equals uh, Angular dot app dot my app or whatever it is, and inside it we're going to have a dot controller, and it's going to be called personal CTRL. That's general um, accepted Angular uh, names for controllers CTRL, and it's got a function. That it needs two services, scope and HTTP. So that's going to get uh, the, sa the, the directory called sample content in, and then the file called personal info.json. In your case here with the Drupal site, this will be getting node slash one through three or slash user slash uh, admin or whatever, whatever page you have the personal information about on, on your website. Um, and then it's got two promises, or returns a promise really, that if we're successful, we'll say then that uh, personal item will be equal to data.nodes.0 and if there's an error, well get the data, print this to the console log and tell me in fairly good detail what the error is and where I need to go to fix it. It even gives suggestions that if you try this, this should fix it for you. Um, so we can see data.nodes0 is here, so oh, nodes and then the first item in, the, uh, in this array is .node, uh, so that will be, that's the zero. So using this then, we will attach it with HTML that looks like this. So we've got an ion nav title that says the ng controller for this. So any place you, 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 you uh, find this stuff here, use the personal controller. And we've got personal item dot node that title. So again, it goes back to JSON, finds dot node, finds that title, and that will use that for the, for the main title where it says uh, Mark Conroy. And then outside of that, we've got the letters TD. So they're hard coded in, into this. Um, I'm not very ambitious. I could never use this app for anybody outside of Ireland. <laughs> Um, then we've got a, a second um, directive here. So this is ion content. So this is our body tag, basically. Um, and that also uses the same controller called personal controller. And it initializes as being empty. That, and it should probably be in your JavaScript file. And we give that class of header. And we got an image source. Now, we, we don't use image src equals when we're talking Angular, because if we try to do that, what will happen is the image will try to load before the, before the page is ready. And if it does that, we're going to get a blank. So we use ng source, so we know that Angular says, hang on there, load an image tag, let me go fetch the data, and when I find it, I'll bring it back and we'll, we'll stick the image in where it's supposed to be. And then we've got the other information there, hi, my name is, and um, personal short bio and constituency office. So if we look at the rendered app that we saw a second ago, we can see then that the, the page title or the app title gets personal.node.title. Uh, the image source comes from personal.node.mainimage.source, 
and then the rest of it is the short bio and constituency office information. And again, it's, it's fairly simple HTML that we're writing there. There's, there's nothing very complex in it. Um, if we want to create a listing page then, so you've uh, got elected or got a new cycling jersey or <laughs> something that's worth having a news post about. Um, so this, this, will ha this will have a title and it will have an image and maybe a read more link and we have maybe three of those at the top of the page and under that maybe seven just titles of, of the, the latest seven news articles or something like that. And I put the date, the, the time, 2043, in the corner uh, because I'm a badass. And it was as complex as I could get at the time. <laughs> so we're going to use data like this. So this is very similar to what we saw a second ago, except this is a JSON array with uh, JSON objects inside it um, of each node. So we've got um, node 147 at the top with the title Mark Connery came for the code and stayed for the community. We got node with an ID of 226 with Mark Connery was re-elected as a TD for Galway East. And then we've got a node 147 again, which is going to break the website, so we can ignore that. <laughs> uh, and it says, Mark Henry becomes the first ever TD elected from Port Tumna. That's the little village I come from. So using that kind of data, we create a listening page. It's pretty much the exact same as what we did a moment ago uh, in terms of you, you put in your title, you put in your ion content, and you give it a controller called news controller, whatever it is. Except we're going to use a new Angular um, uh, property now. It's called ng-repeat. And this is basically your for loop in in a, in in a PHP, and that says that it's, you know repeat this little template here over and over again each time for each item that you find that matches the the parameters that that we give it, and then we're going to add a click function that says that if you click on this app here, don't open the stock browser that comes with the app. So don't open Safari or don't open Chrome or don't open whatever apps come. Instead, open the link inside the app so that it looks like an app. Because remember, this is this is a small website inside the app as opposed to an actual app. It's wrapped up inside a web view. So we've, we've got to tell it, don't open up the external browser. So this, it's a slight bit longer here, but it's, it's, it's not much more detailed really than, than the personal controller. So we, we're, we're again going to say use HTTP service to get sample content slash news slash JSON. So that's the, the news listing page. Data.nodes is going to be our scope here. And then scope.browse. So if, if you do want to browse uh, something, if you do click on whatever it is and you want to use the browser, um, then it's going to say stay inside our own system. Don't use the don't use the systems that come with the with with, with the with the phone or the the uh, tablet that you're that you're presently using. Um, and then we got a local storage stuff there that's going to stringify stuff. So this will allow us to actually store stuff on people's phones uh, or people's tablets for offline use. Uh, and then if there's an error, well, same as usual. Will you print out the error? Will you tell us what it was and give us as much details as you can? And it will. And then the, the list then is, we, we, we saw from earlier on, uh, ion list creates a list instead of ul. Ion item creates a, a list item instead of li. And then we're going to say ng repeat node in nodes. So it's saying for each key as value. So we're going to say for each item in nodes, we'll call them node. Uh, and ng if, so if the index is less than three, it says that only give you back the first three options. So for the first three options, I'm going to use this template. And under this, I can have the same thing and say for anything post three options, give me a slightly amended view. So on this one here, give me um, the node title in H2 um, element, and give me a div then that has a class of image holder and has an image. And then after that, I'll have just H2s just for, for, for my list. And that's uh, basically your news listing page. So we've got the ng repeat, nodes and nodes. We've got the node, that node, that title at the top, and image ng source at the bottom. And that repeats two or three times. And that's, that's, that's your static pages, that's your dynamic. Um, about us pages that are managed in one management system and presented here, and this is now your listing pages. That's a lot of what you would need, I suppose, from an app without starting to get into the not getting started with Ionic uh, framework presentation. So if you need more app in or no, more data in your app, you're going to just repeat the above uh, again and again and again. So whatever you want to do, if you're creating a single page or a listing page, that's the things that that you need to get those going. Um, then you've got to build the app. So we, we, we keep going through these. We add our CSS. We add our SAS or whatever it is. We make it look uh, the way we want it to look. So to build the app then, you go back to your terminal. You CD to the directory where your app is, and you run the command ionic build Android. And that takes maybe 30 seconds or a minute or so, and it builds you an Android app. And then you run a second command, ionic build iOS. And again, it takes another 30 seconds or a minute, and it builds you an iOS app. And then you can test them. So presume you've got an a Android emulator, and presume you've got uh, an iOS emulator on your on your on your computers. 
you're just running Ionic Emulate Android, it powers up the Android and it, it, it shows you what it's going to look like. Ionic Emulate iOS and it shows that what it looks what it's going to look like in your iOS simulator. Or what I think is brilliant, if you have an Ionic Cloud account, you can upload your app to Ionic Cloud, you can download an app called Ionic View, and then you can see your app in real time on your phone that's not even connected to your computer. Uh, and you can send a link to your friends or whatever, or, or, or associates in your company, and everyone can run the app as well. So you're not just using the emulator, you're actually testing the app on a real device in real time and seeing exactly what happens and how it works. And that part of Ionic is free. Um, so then we, we deploy the app then to the cloud. So you, you set up an account on Ionic, um, Ionic Cloud, and you register um, your app, and then you can, I, I can't remember what the command is, I think it's just Ionic Upload, and that just uploads the app, and whatever new features you've built into it, other people will download. So when you click on Ionic, Ionic View app inside your phone, you can you can use use that. Um, and yeah, so the Ionic Cloud is that's this is this is where this becomes not free. So this is this is the we say the Acquia part of of Drupal. This where one second, <laughs> my alarm to catch my kids in school. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, so, so, so this is where we've we've used the free open source version of Ionic, and we've created the app that we want. And now we need to to, to install our app somewhere. So you you can submit it to the App Store, you can submit it to the Google Play Store, or you can submit it to the Ionic Cloud. And that's the the, the store I would be using because um, when you when you upload it to there, you can upload your updates to that as well without submitting anything back into the App Store. Again, unless there's an app a, a new feature coming on that that needs new JavaScripts. Um, and it's it's very cheap, and they have push notification built into it, and they have authentication built built into it, and they have lots and lots of services to give. You know, they do all the all the server admin stuff and the services that you might want from an app to make it a, you know a, a proper app app, not just something as simple as listing pages and 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 details pages. Um, and it's as cheap as I think twenty dollars per month per app, and that will give you something like a million push notifications. Um, Okay, so deploying then to Apple and Google, you gotta create your developer account, you gotta jump through some hoops, uh, you gotta upload your app, you gotta wait, and then you will have your app accepted, hopefully. Now you will have to go to that stage, you do have to submit it to the app stores to be able to be used on the app store. Maybe not with Google because Android allows you to install external apps, uh, but you, you will have to submit it at least once to your to the uh, Apple app store, um, just so it's verified, and then you can, you can maintain it, we'll say, uh, from the Ionic Cloud uh, infrastructure. Um, oh, that's it. There are. Okay. I thought I had another slide or two. <laughs> uh, please, I've been asked to mention this. Do join us for contribution sprints. Uh, if you've never contributed before, it's a great way to get started. If you have contributed before, it's a great way to continue contributing. And uh, if you would like, please give feedback, positive or negative, so we can improve the experience for people and get better presentations or equal, presentations of equal quality each year. And thirdly, uh, Front End United, which I think is absolutely brilliant and great, great value for money. It's on in Athens next year, 26th, 27th of May. Um, come listen to me again. And that is it. Thanks for listening. Any questions? Okay. I think there's a microphone here. It's probably turned on if that's easier. Hi. Hi. Um, I saw on one of the templates you had done something where it's supposed to use the internal storage on the phone um, yes. to store the data. Yep. How does it work with that? Like when you first connect to the app, if they don't have internet access, do they not see anything? Does it wait until they view a page first before it stores if, if, the data? If they have no internet access, they won't see anything, yes. Okay. Um, you, you, you'll see what's already stored, let's say, but if you've mm -hmm. never got the app in the first place, you're going to get a, okay. uh, I guess, just a shell of a listing page that won't have, won't have data in it. Okay, yeah. thanks. Be be because all the data is stored externally, un unless you can actually go and get that stuff, it's not gonna, not gonna come back for you. Okay. You can do... Just one second, we had... I'll just answer that question. You can do... Okay. There's a um, project called ng Cordova, which has a bunch of plugins you can do. If connected, show this. If not connected, do something else. You can have a fallback. Yeah. I was ready for some questions. So <laughs> if you need to extend, that's what you're saying here, basically. You can create your own plugins. 
And if you can't create the plugin that you want it to do, so if you, if you want this kind of offline type stuff and, and, and that, any Cordova plugins that are available, then you, you, can, you can use those in, inside your app. Hi. Sorry, uh, yes. My question is, um, when you mentioned like, uh, you can compile on Android or iOS, you have to have these channels or distributions based on the uh, iOS or Android, or you can create your own kind of a channel of distribution, so you can grab your own apps. So I don't understand the question. The, the question is if, um, if it's possible with this uh, process to create your own uh, app store. I don't see why not. Yeah, the, the app is just getting served from somewhere. So you, you can upload it and serve it from the app store. Um, you can serve it from Ionic Cloud. You can serve it from Google Play, or you can serve it from your own server. Uh, what, what Ionic Cloud is setting up is basically like what Acquia do, but you don't have to host a Drupal website. What Acquia is, we look after all the infrastructure and the maintenance, and it's a, the website is available there. So it's the same thing. You, you can host where you, where you want to host. As far as I know, I might be wrong, but I, as far as I know, that's, that's what you can do. And then you can set up a market to let other people host their apps from your marketplace as well. Thank you. <coughs> Okay. So the, the question is, if you have push notifications to your app, can that be managed from Drupal, or does that have to be managed from somewhere else? Uh, my understanding is you can manage that from Drupal, but I, I haven't implied push notifications. But I, I don't see why there would be any problem with having a, a, a an entity type called push notifications, and you type in one, and it just goes and sends to your Ionic. There is a module in data, though. There you go. Yeah, simple. <laughs> yep. Tom. The question: uh, Do you recommend using, say, uh, <coughs> a module in Drupal instead of add the custom functionality? Do you set most of the uh, most of the dynamic information to be loaded into your app through a view? But is it possible for it to be also like through a custom module? Do you have to do. Do you recommend that, or use Cordova or other? Things to bring uh, other I would things recommend into views because it's so simple and because it's the Drupal way of doing things. You, you can write a custom module or custom SQL query or whatever you want to do yourself to, to extract data and make it available. Um, I, I'd be nervous of creating technical debt by having all your own custom queries that do things and somebody else might have to look after it at some other stage. Um, when, when it's as simple as create a view that lists what you want, I don't, I, I don't see a reason not to do that. Okay, yeah, because I, I was. I guess to, to fill in the question more was looking for a JavaScript timer and a JavaScript timer on Drupal, and then that would that be pulled into the app, or would it be better to use a timer as part of Cordova or part of? Uh, in in that case, I think you'd use the timer as part of Cordova. Yeah. Thank you. The question is, can you edit or create new nodes through the app? I don't know. Uh, so there's a project on GitHub, <laughs> there's Drupal 7, that exposes all of the services for creating and editing nodes. There's not one for Drupal 8, but it should be easier in Drupal 8 because it's all in core. Um, so you can do posts and gets and all of that. Yeah, I guess um, if you're using the HTTP service, that's what's getting JSON. You're going to say post JSON, really, and um, consume that, yeah. That was a good question. <laughs> yes? What about the advantages uh, in front of Drupal Get and Chrome Get? Uh, did, I, I haven't looked at, at, at Drupal Gap very much. Uh, phone Gap, phone, this was actually built on Phone Gap originally and, and on, on Cordova. The guys at Ionic, and I don't want to speak for them or I don't know them and I don't know a huge amount about phone gap or that either. Uh, but my understanding was they decided that what they were building was like phone gap but was so much more better and adding better features and better way of doing things that they decided to uh, basically fork phone gap and this is in, in their view an enhanced version of phone gap. Um, if that makes it better I'm, I'm not sure. Okay the websites uh, there's basically three. Uh, oh, I didn't have a website. It was just my own playing around on a local host version. It looks similar too.
Yeah, I don't see why not. You're you're just building a a web app that uses Angular to to render your content. So it's 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 pretty much the exact same. If, if I was to run Ionic Serve now inside, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll try to do that. Um, yeah, terminal, come on. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, because, because all, all you're doing is taking the data. You're not taking any of the CSS from your Drupal website. So you're going to get a very ugly app, the same as you get a very ugly Drupal when you turn it on first. But the, 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 the two templates that you're using are different, and the CSS that you're using is going to be different. You, you could maybe share CSS by using an external CSS file. But in general, yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be totally different, unless I presume you'd want to make it look similar to your whatever your, your branding is. Uh, if I CD to... Um, Squiggly thing slash HD doc slash app ionic getting started, uh, getting started side menu and ionic serve. So this this will load up the website first, or should load up the website first. Insert or serve? Sorry? Is server or serve? Serve. Ionic serve, so it serves the website. So that, that should open up in Firefox, and then if you change any files inside, um, here it comes out. So this is our home page, and this is our login, and then here's our about me. Uh, make it a bit smaller, make it look more like an app. And then if, if you change anything, any, any files, whether they're CSS or JavaScript or HTML inside your www folder, this will live reload automatically and uh, uh, sh show you a preview. It doesn't do some of the things you want, like it doesn't, doesn't have the native capabilities of, you know, using camera, using geolocation, and using that kind of uh, phone features. So you're, you're better to serve this inside the iOS emulator or the Android emulators. Do you um, hyphen hyphen lat on the end of the Ionic uh, hyphen hyphen lat? If you do that now, then... Do we need to... Yep. Uh, Ionic serve hyphen hyphen. Yep. Oh, very good. I wish you gave this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Give this man a clap. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Will we leave it at that? Thank you. Thank you.